Welcome to setting up a robo cage. I am not a veterinarian or am I um, any sort of expert. I'm just a hamster enthusiast and hobbyist. So, some people have asked me about how I set up my robo hamsters cages and I thought I'd walk you through it. The things that you'll need to make a successful and happy robo cage for your hamster is you'll need to start with a bin. I prefer bins you can use um, aquariums or tanks, but I find these to be very easy to clean. They're lightweight, so they work for people of all ages. Um, little kids could pick it up. However, I don't really recommend little kids having robo hamsters. They're also cheap. They're also cheap, that's right. These are um, $12.99 at Target, and I buy the 110 quart type of Sterilite kind of Tupperware bin. And what's nice about these with robos is that they have very long walls, and so your hamster really is not going to climb out. So I don't have to t sp spend time cutting into plastic and trying to get um, like chicken wire and stuff. So you need the you need the bin. Next, what you'll need is a hamster hide. I like to have a couple hides for my robos because they spend a lot of time um, in nature underground or in burrows and dens. So they tend to be more. Um, living more lower to the ground or underground than say my Syrians do, at least in my experience in captivity. So I have a hide, this one is from Petco, and I also have an igloo hide for him, and you'll see how I put them in the cage in a second. You also are going to need shoes. I like to have a variety of shoes because hamsters can get catered for them. What I selected for shoes is a combo chew. This one is an apple um, shape, it's kind of cute. It's made of wood and it's made of loofah. And it seems that my hamster, Freebie, appreciates having the variety of textures. The other, hey, what you are like, you doing with the camera? You I like you like variety, yeah. don't you, Freebie? This is my video. Oh, Come on. I just thought you wanted to see who the star, Great. The real no, star is. Great, now I to edit all this out. Okay, and then I have these little um, block chews. I got these just because they were cheap. Um, I have a natural wood bark chew for him. And I have these chews, which are um, allegedly fruit flavor, using um, pet safe fruit flavoring, I guess, and a dye. And my hamsters really like these. Because um, Freebie's a robo, I'm going to put in a smaller chew. Uh, as I find smaller chews are um, easier for him, I think. The big chews just sit there unchewed. So I'm putting in this round chew. I also like to keep a rock in my cage. The hamsters can use this to uh, trim their nails because of the rough surface. It wears them down. So that's kind of his little manicure pedicure station in his cage. You also are going to need tubes if you want to do it the way I do it. Uh, my robos really love digging and burrowing. They are, of all my hamster types, and I've had them all, these robo hamsters are the ones that really prefer to spend most of their time in tubing or um, dens. They don't really like to be up and out and climbing over things. My robos at least. So and if you think about it, they're so small that they're kind of like the popcorn chip of the uh, the planes. So they're going to be prey animals. So I think that they just feel more comfortable being um, able to hide. I also include a sand bath. You want to make sure you use sand that is non-clumping and that has low dust. I use reptile sand, which I get at my local pet store. And as you can see, it's um, really low dust. And also, you want to make sure that it's non-clumping because if the hamster gets in there and sniffs some into its nose, the clumping type of sand could stick in there and cause them to be able not to breathe. And then um, the dust could give them respiratory infections because they're in here and they're kicking it up and they will inhale it, which isn't good. You'll also need bedding. I prefer Katie Clean Comfort. You can get this at Target for about $8. It's definitely the cheapest place I've found it. What I like about this bedding, and I'll show you in a second when I put it in, is that it actually holds the hamster's tunnels that they make. Uh, I've tried Care Fresh, I've tried Pine and Aspen, or, and um, this is the one to use. It just is really nice and it holds its shape as you will see. And lastly, what you'll need is a water bottle. 
I use this setup. This was like 99 cents at Walmart, and obviously my like cheap Petco water bottle. And why I like to hang it over the edge of the cage is because I've done Velcro in the past, as you can see, but it tends to um, fall off for some reason. At least maybe it's my environment out here in Southern California, but it just doesn't hold it up. So I find these are worth the investment. Okay, you can stop it. Okay, so now we're to the fun part of the video. This is how I set up my Robo's bin cage. I start by putting the water bottle in just so I don't forget it. And then I add in my bedding. And as you can see, as I put it in, see how it's holding its shape? I'm gonna break that up in a second. But I think it's important to use a lot of bedding in a robo hamster's cage because as I said, they like to dig and they like to hide. And this kind of creates a little comforting den for them and it kind of gives the feeling of being underground if I put in enough bedding. And usually it's about half the bag. It's about 25 liters. And then what I do is I break up the bedding so it's easier for my hamster to manage. Don't get me. So breaking it up, making it kind of fluffy. You also don't want it to be um, too high because then the hamster could potentially get out based on what other materials you put in there. That's pretty good. So it's about an inch thick all the way around, maybe an inch and a half. He will move it around to make it uh, the shape and density that he wants it to be. All right, and you always wanna make sure the water bottle is clear, and I always kinda just test it to make sure the water's coming out. After I do that, I go ahead and I add the larger items. So I'm gonna put his little house in. And you want to kind of push it down so that it's not on top of the bedding, it's actually within the bedding. Then I add the tubes. So this tube actually contains some stuff from his uh, last bin before I cleaned it. And that's so that his smell will be in the bin and so he'll feel um, a little more like, oh, this is my territory and won't be quite as stressed. And then what I do is I actually cover it with some of the fluff. That way, he feels like he's underground. You could use cardboard um, paper rolls from toilet paper, paper towels. I like to use the plastic ones because I can reuse them and they're easy to clean. And I also have a lot from back in the day when I didn't know any better and used those awful critter trail cages. And so there you go. I like to leave a little exposed because I'm selfish and I want to see him running about. And I'm going to add one more. Then I take his hide, the plastic one, and this opening fits pretty well over the tubes. So I just go like that. So he has like a little escape route to feel safe with. And I think I'm going to move this over here just because I don't want it to be too close to where he could access it, jump up and hop out, which has happened. And then the sand bath is always a struggle. They really like it, but he tends to kick the bedding into it. So I like to try to take up a little room, cover up some of those tubes again. I'm just gonna put it right there. You want it to be around low line fluff so that he can uh, use it without kicking the fluff into it. But he'll still kick it in there. And then I add the chews. It doesn't really matter where I put the chews. He moves them around on his own. And then I add his rock. Doesn't matter again. Maybe I'll put, actually I think I'm going to put it by the sand bath and attempt to keep fluff out. Okay. I do have a silent spinner that I'm going to add. I just don't have it with me right now because it's drying because I'm cleaning it. He is a dirty little hamster and he pees on his wheel. So if you had a flying saucer you could place it anywhere. I prefer flying saucers for robos because they go so fast that they throw themselves out and I don't want him to hurt himself. The last, second to last thing I do is I add some hamster food. 
I like hazel hamster for my robos and syrians. I don't really like it for my winter whites because there's so much corn and so many peas. Uh, and so I worry about them having diabetes. But for robos, corn and peas are fine. And I got to admit, like, part of me as a human thinks it's cool to see all the little ingredients because I'm kind of a nerd. So I just take a scoop and I drizzle it. I like to drizzle it instead of placing it into a bowl because it gives him something to do when he wakes up. And it's also how I get to see my robo because he'll come out to find his food every night. Also, I kind of put more in than um, normal because hamsters are natural hoarders and they get uh, stress, their stress levels increase when they have nothing to hoard or don't have a stash. So I like to let him have enough to make a stash. He's not going to overeat or undereat. I've never had a problem. Um, I think that's more of like a human kind of control thing. So I've seen him make his stash, that, and it's kind of cute with these clear tubs because you'll see the stash, and you can actually see your hamster going into his stash. Once you've done all that, you have your last ingredient, which is your cute little robo hamster. And these balls are hard to open with fingernails. So this is Freedy. And he's just going to go right on in. And because the food's in there, it's a little more welcoming and a little low, lower stress because he has little noms to get. And that is setting up a robo hamster cage. Look at how happy Freebie is. If you're wondering, Freebie is a one-year-old male robo hamster. I can't say the long word. Roboroski? I don't know. Um, and I believe he's an agouti coloring, but see, he's already exploring his little tunnel. Well, let's have a moment of hamsters in. Here he comes up front. See, he's already up to his hiding. He really loves to hide. You never see him, really except when he wants food. <laughs>